Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Yesterday night we in the last class we ended by writing down a very 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 important result regarding log barrier functions and this result is already on the screen as you can see. So, it says that if I take the interiority condition that is the strict feasible set of the primal problem and the dual problem both are non empty then all the rest B, C and D will follow. That is for whatever mu you take there would exist a unique minimizer to phi mu, whatever mu you take there will be exist unique minimizer to phi tilde mu and that system f mu x y s equal to 0 will have a solution that is a relaxed KKD or the approximate KKD system will have a solution. So, the unique fact that the interesting fact that this result tells us that this mu does is not a very big problem you can take any mu strictly bigger than 0. So, that is why we have written here for any mu and for any mu. Okay. Now, this is something very very important and we have to keep in mind because this is central to the development of algorithms for interior algorithm interior point algorithms for linear programming problems. Now, we said that okay, we will try to give a proof of at least a part of the result. So, we will just prove that okay, we will assume that we know that A implies B. Hmm. So, okay, the interiority condition holds and so we will try to now show that if I have B, I will have D and if I have D, I will have B. Now, proving B implies A and A implies B involves certain difficulties which I do not want to put you in it involves a lot of technical issues and lot of uh, the viewers here who may or may not be uh, doing any sort of money may not be involved in rigorous mathematics, but just really want to know the basic ideas involved in this sort of algorithms may not uh, be thrilled with such a proof. So, it is very very important that you also at the same time have some basic understanding that okay, if I can find a minimizer a unique minimizer of the strictly convex function phi mu that is the barrier function, then I am actually solving the inexact KKT condition. So, here I we cement a link between the solution of barrier functions and the solution of the KKT system the approximate KKT system which will generate what we call the central path in interior point methods. So, phi mu here can be actually instead of being generated over only f not p it can be generated over in tar n plus also. And now what we know if we assume b to be true. So, we know that this problem has a unique minimizer because this is this thing constitutes the feasible set f not p. So, I can write the feasible set which is actually f not p here. So, just for sake of it I am writing it in a simple simpler way I am writing it f I am putting f not p equal to s for the time being and I am writing it like this which can be written as the intersection of these two sets. In x bar is a unique minimizer then the optimality condition which is of course, this optimality condition is an if and only if condition. Then this optimality condition holds. Then actually we can show that this is equal to this plus this where this is this c hat is this. Now, how do we show that we can write the indicator function of this as a sum of the indicator functions of these two sets and this indicator function is nothing but 
as you see is 0 when x is in s and plus infinity when x is not in s and this is what we have discussed earlier and you know that the sub differential of the indicator function will give you a normal core and blah blah stuff and this is applying the sub differential sum rule. So, sorry this should be like this uh, delta of so sub differential of this. So, the normal cone to s delta of this and then the sum rule is applied. If you do not remember how a sum rule is applied let me tell you that the delta function on R n plus plus the domain of the de delta function the convex function is R n plus plus and it is continuous on R n plus plus and that is why you can actually do the sum rule you have equality and then writing down this definition that the sub differential of a indicator function is a normal cone you have this, but this been an open set you can prove that if x bar is element of interior of some set say a then some convex set a then normal cone to a at x bar is nothing but the 0 vector this has. So, it is a cone which is a trivial cone which consists just 0 ok. So, this n s x bar is nothing but n c at x bar and n c at x bar we have studied earlier is nothing but the image of a transpose that is for any v in n c at x bar the there exists y in r m plus. Hmm. So, instead of this we should write. So, for any v it can be replaced for whatever v you choose here given give me a v there would be a y in r m such that v is equal to a transpose y. So, which means there exists a y in r m such that this holds because this is nothing but the grad of phi mu at x bar and this is finally, so this is this is the normal cone element which is of the form a transpose mu. So, instead of taking y I am taking just I am putting replacing y by minus y does not does not make much of a difference just for simplicity instead of y I have just put minus y does not matter you can set there is a minus y in r m such that this holds. So, if I put s is equal to this which is exactly if you look if x is where x is the diagonal L matrix having these as diagonal elements. Now, this x is in the interior because x is all these x 1s x 2 x 3 these are all bigger than 0. So, you can this definition mu of x inverse this is completely clearly defined. So, this is nothing but the vector mu x 1 dot dot mu x n. So, you are getting s 1 x 1 equal to mu s n s n equal to mu. So, you are basically solving this system where it is required you are solving the system f mu x s f mu x y s equal to 0 and this is not giving you this and obviously you have a x equal to b because your solution set has to be a feasible point and also it satisfies this. So, any solution of that actually solves this system it gives me a y gives me a s which is this and in fact the interesting part is that x is created from s is created from the x itself. So, if I know the solution of the barrier function over f not p then from that I can create the s and then the y automatically is generated and hence I have also got this and also just by it from the definition of s I have got this. So, this is a relaxed k k t which is relaxed k k t. So, this relaxed k k t is also solved by the same solution. So, b would imply d. Now, if d if I assume d that is such an x exists then I can go back and do the same argument step step back and so I can go and have have that this a solution of the relaxed k k t system would imply that it is a unique minimizer of phi mu over f not p phi mu being strongly convex strictly convex function the minimizer would be unique. Now, I would leave the reverse argument to you to do as a homework, but remember that this is a very very important notion. Now, again I want to recall you that if you look at the very fundamental Newton's equation then there is an 
for each x y s this is the Jacobian of that system. Now this Jacobian of course f x y s is a a transpose y plus s minus c a x minus b and x s e. So if you take this is this is exactly the Jacobian and this Jacobian is invertible if this and this is greater than 0 and this is very very important for us to note. Now what is the central path? Central path is is nothing but for different mu's the solution of the approximate KKT condition or the relaxed KKT condition. So for every you change a mu you have one solution, you change another mu you have another solution. It is again I want to re remind you though I have been reminding this for a long time that you keep on solving this system of equation and all the points that you get creates they create a path in the feasible space and that is known as the central path. So the central path exactly is not really in just the primal feasible space but of course it will create a path in the primal feasible space. But C hat this central path C hat is a subset of the primal dual space now if I take the excess space that is x into s space which I should write more as then if you project the central path on the excess space then what you have x1 s1 equal to x2 s2 equal to x3 s3 equal to dot dot x and s n. So this is exactly what you will have you will have a straight line in the excess space and this formalism of projecting the central part into the excess space has very very important uh, ramifications when we will study for example uh, three different types of uh, projection or three different types of methods three different types of two or three different types of path following methods. Now we will write down an example of computing the central path you must remember that the central path is very very well defined because once you have defined the interiority condition that there is a strict feasible solution then immediately we know that whatever mu you take the f mu x y s equal to 0 has a solution and each of these solutions correspond to a path in the in a, path, a point in the central path. So you are taking the primal problem L p so I have to minimize this function in three variables of course x is bigger than 0 basically this means x1 bigger than 0 x2 bigger than 0 x3 bigger than 0. So for this problem I, I would like to find the central path. So I would not write the dual problem dp not really the dual but the extended dual or e, e, sorry the equivalent dual. So how do I do that I would I would leave this again as a homework for you to find the dual but the dual in this case there is only one constraint so one equality constraint so number of dual variables equals the number of equality constraints. So we will have max of y subject to a transpose y plus s equal to C. So, it will be three such equations plus three such C's here. Here, what is my A? A is just 1, 1, 1, and you have x1, x2, x3. So, it is basically the vector 1, 1, 1. So, it is a 1 cross 3 matrix. So 
A transpose is 3 cross 1, it is the column matrix 1 1 1. So, 1 1 1 into y, so it is y y y. So, A transpose y is just y y y and you are adding s to it which is s 1 s 2 s 3. So, this equal to c subject to s 1 s 2 s 3 bigger than 0. Now, once you know that, now my KKT condition, what is my KKT condition? What let me write down the relaxed KKT. Relaxed KKT is this system y plus s 3 plus 4 equal to 0. x 1 s 1 equal to mu, x 2 s 2 equal to mu, x 3 s 3 equal to mu. This is my relaxed KKT. Of course, x i s i is strictly bigger than 0, because mu is strictly bigger than 0, x i is strictly bigger than 0 and s i is strictly bigger than 0 for i equal to 1, 2, 3. Now, what do you have from here? Let us take the calculation here. So, what do I have from this system? I would have s 1 is equal to minus 1 minus y 1, s 2 is equal to minus 3 minus y 2, s 3 is equal to minus 4 minus y 3, no sorry, I am making a very bad mistake, y, 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 y is same, there is only one y. This is what you have. So, all of these would imply that y is strictly less than minus 4. Now, from this set of equations x 1 s 1 equal to mu, x 2 s 2 equal to mu and x 3 s 3 equal to mu, I will get the following expression. So, 1 by mu is 1 is x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 by mu, so this is equal to 1 and then this will become 1 by s 1 plus 1 by s 2 using this set of equations, the last one this, this set, this set of equations. And this now you can put, so mu is now, uh, there is a relation between mu and y. So, I can express y in terms of mu, you see, once I express y in terms of mu, I can express s in terms of mu and hence I can express s in x in terms of mu. By what is when s mu is equal to 1 by x mu that is all a mu by x mu. So, mu is actually given to me. So, this is so it is a cubic equation that you will have. So, you can solve the cubic equation by the usual Cardano's method or some other standard algebraic method. You solve the cubic equation and solving we have a solution y tilde which is a solution of this equation y is expressed in terms of mu. Now, once I have this no matter what I will I will know that once I have y mu y tilde mu I will have s tilde mu when I have s tilde s, s mu basically. So, when I have s mu I will immediately have x mu. So, that that will keep on generating the central path as I change mu. So, this is one simple example that even for a very simple case how difficult it could be to find the central path. So, the question is is it advisable to really make an attempt to do such things? The answer is of course not you do not attempt to do such things because these things are so complicated for very such simple problems it would be so complex if the problem is very large. So, what we are supposed to do then that is the question. So, 
So, we have to go to the basic structure of the primal dual framework. Okay, we will now go to the basic structure of a primal dual framework. basic structure of a now once i am talking about the basic structure of a primal dual framework what we would have is the following is that we cannot now attempt to think about finding the central path. So, what we have to do? We have to do certain slight modification in our Newton system. So, that we attempt to find points which we and we solve that new slightly modified system approximately. And so, we try to find certain points near the central path and we have to show that it is enough to find such points. We do not need to find some extra I mean something much more rigorous. These sort of approximate points will finally, lead me to the solution and that is that is exactly what you want. So, in general given any x y and s I do not know whether they are actually primal feasible or dual feasible. So, in general x y s is given which may or may not be feasible. So, if it is feasible then it is fine, if it is not feasible ok. So, let us do the standard thing writing x k plus 1 y k plus 1 minus y k is delta y k. This is a standard sort of notations. Some books obviously make a little change, they write this as minus grad x, does not matter just to adjust the minus in the Newtonian sign. Now, let us write down this system. Unless they are feasible, we do not know whether this is 0. So, we can put this a dual residual that is it is not 0, but something else. So, we define it basically. The primal residual and the complementary residual. Excess mu is R c. So, our Newton's equation is of this form in general. Or the Newton scheme rather I should say. If you are little bit of more you write you will say it is a Newton scheme. In this particular case it will look as this into delta instead of k I am writing k here delta x k delta y k. I am just writing delta x, delta x means x, x k to x k plus 1 for the time. Of course, you can write delta x k and find for every k what, what is it, but does not matter it will be almost the same, it will depend on the x at that moment, x k at that moment. 
So, I am or you can say okay, I write delta x to denote x plus and x. And in general, this would mean k plus 1, this will mean k that is all I mean x k plus 1 minus x k. So, do not bother you can put x k also that matter I am just for simplification I am writing it in this form. This is exactly my Newton scheme, but if all are 0, these two are 0, then 0, 0 minus R C. Okay. Now, can this equation system of equations have a solution? Okay. I can slightly modify this equation. Now, because x and s is strictly bigger than 0, because when we start our basic structuring an assumption which is standard is that the interiority point condition hold so now what i'll do i can do a little bit of restructuring so i'll multiply this row block row by s inverse so what you will have here is So, if I multiply S inverse it will remain the same it will the new solution new system will give the same solution. X by S basically. Now, can I actually solve them out explicitly? Can we this is equivalent, I am not writing we can can we explicitly compute delta x, delta y and delta s. So, we take this and go back and, and try to do to, to this one. So, now what we are going to show as we have said that can we solve out this delta x delta y delta s. Now, the question is very very simple that by solving this we are solving the Newton system for this particular for the inexact or relaxed KKT system and that is what we need to solve to find the central path. So, this is very important that in our algorithms or the program that we will write, we will have to know the solutions of this. So, our first step is to know that can we solve the Newton method explicitly. So, it will be easy to program it because solving the Newton step would become expensive because of the inversion that you would require of this matrix if you cannot solve them explicitly. But though you will need some inversion, but it is very good to store the inverse at the very beginning because these matrices are fixed and so then you can immediately. Uh, write down the whole thing. So, instead of uh, writing uh, inverse of matrices doing mat the inverse of this whole matrix or this matrix A uh, whatever uh, what we would like to do is without do using the inverse of this whole matrix or without using the inverse of this A or A transpose whatever we can simply compute this delta x delta y delta s in only inverting the diagonal matrices which are just simple things. So, now we will write down the whole system once again which is so we will do the step by step computation now. This is equal to minus of R C sorry R R R D R P R C. So, let me see. So, what do I get from this? I get A transpose delta x, sorry delta y not delta x, delta x has nothing to do it is with 0, A transpose delta y plus delta s 
i into delta s is delta s is minus r d a times delta x remaining at 0 is minus r p s times delta x plus x time delta s the last one give me minus r c. Look at the first one from the first one I would have delta s is minus r d minus a transpose delta y. Now, from the last one what I will get forget about this one. Now, for the last one I will get s inverse minus r c minus x delta s. So, what was r c? r c was just again reminding you r c was x s mu e. x s minus mu e. So, what would be done x and s would commute these are diagonal matrices and so you will have minus x plus s inverse of mu mu would come out and s inverse of e. So, it will become s 1 s 2 s 3. So, mu 1 s 1 mu 1 s 2 mu. So, or you can just write mu s inverse e minus x s inverse s inverse x and s they will commute as diagonal matrices delta s. So, this is what is delta x I have got. Now, I will substitute these delta x into this equation. So, I will get delta s from there. So, putting this putting delta x in the second equation so let us put delta x into the second equation. So, a times minus x plus mu s inverse e minus x inverse delta s is equal to minus r p. Now, once I know this fact I can immediately uh, write down. So, x here means x k. So, instead of writing this you can also write the second equation as a s inverse minus r c minus x delta s is equal to minus of r p. So, you will have a s inverse r c minus a s inverse x delta s is equal to minus r p. Now, delta s you know from here there is something. So, you can write a s inverse r c minus a s inverse x into delta s is minus r d minus a transpose delta y. This will give you minus r p. Now, a s inverse r c minus a s inverse x minus minus plus r d minus minus again plus a s inverse x a transpose
delta y is equal to minus r p. So, a s inverse x a transpose delta y is equal to minus r p minus a s inverse r c minus a s inverse x r d and delta y thus is equal to a s inverse x a transpose this into inverse of this part into minus r p minus a s inverse r c minus a s inverse r d. So, this is delta y. Now, you must ask me why are you suddenly inverting this? Let us see why we are suddenly inverting this minus a s inverse x a transpose r p plus a s inverse r c minus sorry a s inverse x r t a s inverse x r t now why this inversion is done here because this matrix is positive definite now, how do you prove that this is positive definite? So, very important thing to note here. A x s inverse a transpose is positive definite. Let us see what happens with x a x s inverse a transpose x. So, this would imply this would be equal to some sum x x in as per the symbol. So, if you take the inner product, how would you say that this a is full rank? So, how do you take take care of x s inverse? That is the whole thing. So, this matrix is nothing but x 1, x 1, x 2, x 2, x n, s n. This has to come with this one. Now, the positive definiteness of this part is an important issue here and how would you prove this positive definiteness is something one has to think about a little bit. Note that this is positive definite. So, it is not so simple to figure out that this is positive definite it takes a little bit of time. So, I uh, ask you to go and do it as homework. So, once you know delta y, you can figure out what is delta s, because once you know delta y, you know delta s is nothing but minus r d minus a transpose delta y. And once you know delta s, you know delta x. So, this can be also taken as homework, but it will be very important to know that whether this matrix is uh, having uh, whether this matrix can be uh, and how to prove that this is positive definite it is slightly a important thing you have to know that there is something called a square root of a matrix and you can express this as for any positive definite matrix there exists another matrix b positive semi definite matrix there exists another matrix b such that b square is equal to a. So, if a is a positive semi definite matrix then there is exist another positive semi definite matrix b such that b square is equal to a. So, try to write this as so that is called the square root. So, this will be given by half try to write this as this and then try to solve this problem this this is anyway a symmetric matrix. So, do not worry about it. So, with this with uh, with this little homework at the end 
we figure we end this thing and the next class we will start the central framework of primal dual methods i p interior point methods. See our standing assumption would be that there is absolutely no question that the interior point condition is holding that is always there. Thank you.